think the thing that made that the best was fucking King Kong. <laughs> what? Oh. The video I said yeah. was just King Kong. Yeah. Yes. The first uh, first environment you will need uh, is what I call the tavern, for obvious reasons. Um, the environment does not have to literally be a tavern, but it is essentially the meeting place where players can make introductions, have time to test the waters of like the setting and some of the like more fiction forward aspects of the game, gather information necessary to give them that that uh, uh, that good old uh, agency that they need to make decisions going forward. That sweet, sweet agency that can never be taken away ever, even if it makes sense for the narrative. Um, don't worry about it. Uh, why is this important? Well, it kind of isn't. Like, this is the weird thing. And I know that I put it in here to be like, no, it's important. You should put it in. It, it's it's the least important of the three environments because they can technically, the players could pop up in the forest or the whatever. But I think a lot of really, uh, uh, I hate to use the phrase generic, but a lot of games, especially when they're starting with new GMs, they have this like desire to have the players sort of pull a critical role and just immediately get into the role play and, and do whatever. But not all parties are like that, right? If you start them off in the forest, which I will explain in a second, they might not really know what to do or how to proceed if they've not thought about, you know, how their character does things, um, what aspects of the fiction they're gonna follow. Uh, maybe they haven't read through their character sheets completely. The tavern gives them a good spot, like a buffer, basically, between the initial jump of the campaign to actually getting into the meat and potatoes of it all. And for that reason, I have put it here. I mean, uh, up I'll, next, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, your players are not going to do the critical role thing on session one, like ever. It's just not going to happen unless it's a group that you've played with a bunch with already multiple times and are all comfortable playing around each other, that's the only way you're going to get that. If it's like a fresh group or, or or half the group is new people or people that aren't don't usually play together, you are not going to get the critical role thing in session one, no matter what. Do not try and force that. It's just not going to happen. It's okay. No, correct. It's, it's not going to happen, and then you're just going to feel kind of bad about yourself because you're like, how come, how come I couldn't get them to do the thing? You're just not gonna like just don't give yourself that expectation. Expect that your first session is going to be a little awkward as, as like players and characters find their footing uh, and start to really get a hold of what's their, you know, what the game is going to be like. Don't set don't set yourself up for failure. Yes, do not do that. Or don't if, set like, your expectations up for failure. I did something like that. Don't set your expectations too high. Basically. Granted, uh, personally, I, uh, the tavern bit, I, I'm not a fan. I've talked about that before, but it has its uses. True. And you are, again, you know, you're quite experienced when it comes to GMing. So I think you very easily can skip this step entirely and be perfectly fine. Like, shit, fucking beyond the gods, we were fine. Like, I mean, I, I would argue that everyone can actually skip this step and get more success out of it than they realize, but people are hesitant to do so. And I think the main reason people are hesitant to do so is because newer GMs, one of the main problems they have is that comfortableness. Uh, they lack the confidence in their authority. And when I say authority, I sort of mean their ability to control the, the pace of things. Uh, they lack the confidence in their authority to just move things along. So they give the players all this time to faff about and all this room to do whatever because they think that that will make the players happy because they don't want to be pushy and annoying or like too authoritative. But you actually should be because if you just push the players along, that gives the players something to react to because you say this happens, they say I do this. You say this happens, they say I do this. Like giving them something to immediately react to often is just better. So I think the tavern thing, people lean on it, but I don't actually think people need to lean on it quite the way they think they do. That being said, you could sort of replace the tavern and just say 
a general first meetup area is kind of really what we're talking about here. Yeah, yeah, like I said, the tavern does not have to be a literal tavern. It's just wherever the tutorial area it's is. It's a place where, yeah, the idea is the player characters meet up and then you give them some basic information and then you get going. I think the problem, I think the, the fuck up that a lot of people have is the getting going. They like take too long to get to that point. Like they take forever to just get things rolling. And that's the part that the GM should really focus on like you as a GM should be like okay we are going now stuff is happening now doing the thing like because otherwise your players will just faff about with their thumb up their ass mm -hmm. now once the players have gotten their initial plot hook right they're they're ready to get going as it were the next area that you should be you should prep realistically I call the forest once again not a literal forest but it is, uh, it's the locale that the players will need to travel through or to where they might encounter their first combat. Uh, the zone acts like a more of a, a mechanical tutorial for the players, often introducing them to the combat for the first time. And the combat is likely going to be low stakes, you know, like rats or some goblins or something, something to familiarize themselves with the combat style of the game and how the more crunchy side of uh, the mechanics might get going. Uh, if the if uh, if your campaign uses battle maps, this would be the first place to have one. Yep. I mean, that's all I'm gonna get. Just yeah. <laughs> I I, um, I worked so hard for this, Josh. I'm sorry. I was I was thinking. Um. Yeah, I mean the forest. Yeah, the idea of traveling from point A to point B. This is your sort of in between stretch. Uh, this is where I think the thing. Yeah, you could get the first combat tutorial. You can also get in. This is where you'll get the first sort of um, messing around with the general mechanics sort of stuff. Like, for example, if it's D&D, this is where you can get some skill checks in there. You know, if it's a cyberpunk game, maybe this is where you're going to do some like stake in the stake in the mission area out type stuff. You know, a. Uh, Stuff along those lines, playing with this sort of interacting with the general non combat focused mechanics. This is also where you hit that. Uh, and well, it doesn't have to be a forest. It's often great when it is a forest. Big fan of spooky forest. Yeah, look, it's, it's a classic reason. Uh, like, as you'll notice, all of the, the, the fucking names I've used are pretty like they're cliches. But they're damn good ones, and cliches are cliches for a reason. Listen, I don't love the tavern, but I love me the spooky forest. Yeah, yeah of course. I think it's because there's just infinite possibilities for a spooky forest. Like, and yeah, pretty, pretty much, much all of it makes sense. Yeah. Everything from, like, a Wendigo to some bandits to some, like, kobolds that locked themselves out of their own lair and, like, set a bunch of traps, and now they're like, help. Help, we're stuck out of here. What do we do? <laughs> Please help us get into our dungeon. Uh, yeah, like I said, uh, like what, blah, blah, fuck me. Like what me and Josh said, it, it allows players to really interact with the, the crunchier side of the game in a very introductory way that won't, you know, drown them in, what's, what's a really dumb one? Like grappling rules in Shadowrun, what is that, like four pages? Um, no. Uh, Pathfinder has really long grappling rules. You might be thinking of that one. That's what, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, don't, yeah, you don't necessarily want to get into any of the more uh, crunchy, obnoxious mechanics. That's for, I mean, I'm trying to think what would be the 5e equivalent. Like, don't do, uh, I don't know, don't use crafting rules right away. Like, that's not even a good, I'm trying to think of what a good, like comparison what in 5e would be uh like jump distances and climbing rules yeah yeah that's not a bad basically don't 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 start with any of the mechanics that require like rules minutia stuff start with your basic skill check dc yes or no pass or fail type shit yeah they've got they've got to hop over a puddle before you can strap rockets to the orc and make it scale in the mountains because you don't want to do the combat encounter Sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
that being said, combat encounters are a minutia thing, but they're, they're you know, you kind of can't skip that. You have to do it at some point. So, yeah, they're a minutia thing, but they're also a major factor of the game, especially um, if you're playing something like D&D. The focus of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, after the forest, you get to. You get to Sons of the Forest. Hmm. Yes. True. But what you actually get to is what I like to call the layer.